Good morning. Okay, good. I was just checking whether you are asleep or not. <laughs> so thank you very much for attending my talk. I was a little bit worried, saying, oh, I'm going to start the day two at the GS Conf with a talk about mental health, knowing that it was a party yesterday. <laughs> so it's, it, it's hard to figure it out. It's going to be empty or not? And just 10 minutes ago, the room was empty. <laughs> so I'm Antonio Cobo. I'm principal consultant at Contino in the UK. And I want to clarify a couple of things. I'm not a pandemic expert, and I'm not a mental health expert. OK? And about the communication thing, I want you to tell me after the talk if what I've been told is true. I have some colleagues in the UK on a previous job that they were from Hungary, and they told me, you know, you only need four words in, in Hungarian to live here 10 days. So you, you can tell me after if Igen, Kosonom, Gratulalok, and Palinka are enough. <laughs> so ju just on the Q&A, please let me know whether I have to thank them or not. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my family, because it's important talking about mental health about the family. Well, I'm from Spain, so that's the reason I have a weird accent. And cool. In 2005, I moved to Paris, and I have to learn French from there, because astonishingly, they don't speak Spanish there. <laughs> and maybe it was one of the reasons that I moved out in 2014, but to a wrong country, there's still no Spanish there. But I'm, I'm there now, and I'm even British now. I met there my wife, that she's from Slovakia. Cool. And we have a beautiful daughter that, luckily for her, she looks like my wife. And not <laughs> so the rest of my family, I'm not going to tell you anything about the husbands or wives of my siblings, and you will understand soon why. My mother lives in Toledo, in Spain, and I have two sisters there in the same city. I also have another sister living in Zaragoza, also in Spain. Most of the people with four siblings, it's OK. Right? But I have one brother living in Granada, also in Spain, and another one, and another one. One in Sevilla, and a sister in Paris. So you can imagine six different cities, three different countries. It's really weird for us to be all together. In fact, I remember once talking on, on the family group that, you know, the last time we were all together, it was in 2013 when my father died. And we say, we need to change that. Let's, let's try to be together on a happy moment and not on a sad one. And we found the idea moment, the 75th birthday of my mother. We were going to be all together there. I was going to travel from UK, 10 days in Spain. My mother was so excited, buying a lot of nice food and so on. Nice plan, right? I forgot to tell you one thing important. The 75th birthday of my mother was 19th March 2020. So it wasn't as we planned. It was like that. That was my mother's birthday. And I don't know if you've ever been to Spain. A lot of block flats, they're usually like that, with a swimming pool in the middle and uh, the play area. And there are some, some flats that actually you have the window there, and you can see the swimming pool and everything. It's great. You don't have the noise of the road. But in a pandemic, you see no one. There is no one on the swimming pool. You don't see even cars. You remember all the videos at the beginning of the pandemic, the guy with the sock eating uh, cars, like a hum, hum, hum. My mother wasn't able to even do that. So she was two weeks without seeing anyone at all. And it was really hard, especially the first two weeks. We remember at the time, we didn't know a lot about COVID. And it was always, in two weeks, you would know whether you have it or not. And that's the scary thing, those two weeks. And she was alone. The good thing is we have a, a strange sense of humor. So at least we were having a lot of video calls. And she was saying, 
you know, these two weeks that are really hard, but probably it's the two weeks of my life that I've eaten the best food because I bought everything for all of you. There was, I don't know, 20 people coming to see her. And I have turkey, a lot of browns, and everything. So probably it's, I, I never buy these kind of things for myself because I, I'm alone. So it was good. And it's so important to have a good sense of humor and video calls all the time, right? I think that it was the main thing surviving for all of us. It was we were able to do video calls. And I'm really lucky or happy that we decided some time ago to buy an iPad to my mom so she could have a, a messengers and calling us. Otherwise, without that, it would have been harder, right? I'm sharing this with you not only the, because you're going to say, oh, poor Antonio, poor mom. It's, it's just one story. But I realized after that that all of us here were privileged. We're privileged right now because we are here. Not a lot of people can say that we are here, right? And also realized that with my work, I was having a good work before pandemic. During the pandemic, I could keep my work. A lot of people was able to even change jobs and get a better job. Others, they lose it, but it was a lot of opportunities. And now I feel privileged. And I can work for a company that say, you work where you work best in UK. So if you don't want to go to the office, no one is going to force you that, only if you want to go. That's a privilege. And every day that we open our eyes, that's a privilege. This talk is not about me sharing all my experience and all the tips. It's about a lot of people that willingly, they share with me their stories and the small tips. I have a lot of people from different countries, a lot of immigrants living in the UK, like myself, sharing a flat in the UK. I don't know if you ever work, uh, live in London, but there are some flats that you don't even have a living room. The living room is a bedroom from someone else. So you're sitting in a flat and you only have a kitchen and your room. And of course, you're not going to talk to the other because you don't know whether they have COVID or not, right? One of the privileges is to have a house with a garden. I don't know who have a garden here. I have a small garden and that was a liberation. All the stories that I'm gonna share and the small tips, you can think that it's a little bit to keep saying your body, your mind, and your soul. And of course, everything that I'm gonna share, I haven't followed everything. I had to prioritize. You could feel the between body, mind, and soul, which one I didn't prioritize, right? <laughs> because I couldn't, all the three at the same time, it was too hard, right? <laughs> So another story that is not from me. Well, I live in UK, end of 2020. We have our UK variant of COVID. And the UK wasn't a great place to be in the world. So one of my colleagues, he wasn't from the UK. The school already announced the whole year is going to be homeschooling. So what he thought, I'm going to send my wife and my two kids with my family, my home country because here in UK, it's not going well. And it's a right, I, I think it's, it's a good plan, right? You could do the same, probably, to try to keep your family safe, especially when you don't know what's happening. Something happened, of course. Can anyone say, what's that? Delta. Delta. Now I forgot to say, like my, the birthday of, of my mom, he was from India. He sent the end of 2020 his family to India because India at that time was really, really good on all the statistics and things like that. And he had every night thinking, wow, I've sent my two kids and my wife there. He even lost two of his uncles there while his family was there. So it was really hard for that person after working hours to think about his family. So what did he do? I think that he managed to get nearly every possible certification on the Azure. He was studying all the time. He was trying to keep the mind completely busy, so I don't have to think about my family only when they call me. And he was trying always to talk with the colleagues, myself, and things like that. And it's keeping your mind busy, trying to learn every day something. It helped him, it helped a lot of different people. And now, 
that is the different times with the pandemic, is something that we, we should keep. It's a little bit like, try to become a better version of yourself every time. That's the reason I usually like to wear this T-shirt, because for me it's try to level up every day. Try to become better. Other problems are space. In London, flats and houses are really, really expensive. That expensive is that I don't even live in London, I live really far from London. I know a lot of families, they share with me that they were renting really, really small flats or small houses because on weekends they could go to any park, a lot of things, because London has a lot of offering. And I assume that it's like in every capital, in every country, the capital has a lot of theaters, a lot of parks, a lot of activities for kids. So it's not a problem if your house is really small because you can live outdoors. But then you have the homeschooling, being at home, the kids all the time and both parents needing to work from home. That changed our lives, right? And then it's, you need to find a space in your house and you don't know how. One of the things that a lot of people told me is with the shed and the garden. A lot of people started working on the shed. The problem is, if you didn't have the shed already ready, it was impossible for two months to get any material for the, uh, DIY because it was completely sold out. So a lot of them started to work on the shed without anything, just putting a long cable of the electricity or just working two hours there. Then I go, I plug my laptop, my wife can work two hours there and I stay with the kids. And that was the way to actually have a little space for themselves. And then little by little they were improving the sheds. I've seen some sheds that people <laughs> show me that it, it's better than some flats that I lived in Paris. <laughs> it, it, it's incredible. But I'm unable to do DIY. I'm, and I, I have two left hands for that. <clears throat> the key thing for them and for everyone that you have the homeschooling is everything that you are getting that you didn't have before. So I remember when I was commuting before, there were a lot of days that when I left home, my daughter was sleeping. And when I arrived home, my daughter was sleeping. So from Monday to Thursday, because I, luckily I was able to work from home on Fridays, I didn't see my daughter, only on videos, on pictures. And now with all the situation, she's five years old now, and I've been with her seeing every day, having lunch, having lunch with my wife. That's a, it, it's, it's a good thing. So it's those small moments that probably we didn't realize before that it's, it's the sense of life for me now is to enjoy those small moments. Because the work is going to be there tomorrow. Those small moments, we don't really know if we are going to have them tomorrow. So just enjoy those small moments. And Imposter syndrome. I can literally give a full talk about imposter syndrome, like some of you know, but I'm not going to do that. A lot of people that share stories with me, they were all sharing a moment that is one of the traits of imposter syndrome, that is comparing yourself with your teammates. Normally, with imposter syndrome, you're comparing the others with you, and your self-esteem is really low, that you always think that they are really, really great, and you are the one that is just getting the team down. It was worse during the pandemic because a lot of people have the feeling that I don't understand, I don't have force to smile on the webcams. And I have uh, some of my teammates, they're smiling all the time, they feel like they are enjoying and their life is great, and I, don't, I, I cannot feel a reason to, to smile with the, everything that is happening. You have to stop comparing yourself with others. There is only one comparison that it matters. It's not about the people putting on Instagram and nice things or on social media. The real comparison that matters is how you were yesterday and how you are today. You have to strive for micro improvements. If you feel like a, you are like a three out of 10 today, don't try to be four out of 10 tomorrow. That might be too hard. But try to be 
zero, zero, one tomorrow and try to feel how could I know if tomorrow I'm going to be that small better. When you figure it out how, then you can make it happen. And don't try to aim to be a 10 out of 10. You are on a 3, come on. You cannot be a 10. And probably, if you're already on a 7 and A, you're OK. You don't need to be a 10. Perfection is the enemy of great. We only need to be great, right? Before pandemic, did you have a fixed desk in your office that it was your allocated desk? Hans. Among all of you, did you have anything that it was a picture of your family, a little toy, a little Lego, something that it was different, that it was you? Do you do the same on your workspace at home? Or do you have just a laptop? Because that's one of the key things. Even if you were working from the kitchen table at the beginning, a tip that a lot of people told me is they were putting the picture of a family or the little Lego that they were having in the office or a different le Lego just to find like it's my space working like before. Have something that is a personal story. So you see all the aloe veras there? I like to put them there. So that's my <laughs> working space now. It wasn't like that at the beginning of the pandemic, but it, it got better. When I got them, they were that tiny. And I got them in Fuerteventura on my honeymoon. So when I'm feeling a little bit down, I can always look how they grow. I can't, I can't think I have grown as well since 2016. So I have a one Lego that you cannot see in the Star Wars over there. And also it's a little bit messy, I know, but well, I cannot be perfect, right? The thing is, if you personalize your desk, you feel like working sometimes is not working. It's something that you feel confident, you feel comfortable, and that's a good thing, right? Morning exercise or exercise. I'm really good finding excuses to avoid exercise. And my surprise, I was alone, no. A lot of people, they were really good finding excuses to avoid doing exercise. This is one tip that it didn't work for me because on Fridays when I was working from home before pandemic, I was always on sport clothes. So for my mind being on sport clothes, it didn't mean not to be working. But for some people, especially some that they were always working in the office, they never dare to have sport clothes in the office. So for them, if I'm sport clothes, I'm gonna practice sport. So the, for the brain, it was working like that. The problem is you can find excuses to avoid doing that. And more than one, and it was my surprise, found a really trick. If you have your mind already used that when you are on sport clothes, you are going to do exercise, how do you ensure that you don't find an excuse like it's raining or that it's cold? Because in the UK, it's raining, I don't know, 400, every year, uh, 400 days every year, right? They change the first thing in the morning without opening the curtains or without even checking the weather. So I change and then I open. Oh, but like it's raining, but I'm going to do it anyway, the exercise, because I have the sport clothes. And I found that genius. When you have that mentality, that is whatever you are wearing, I'm doing it. And it was probably the same people that for them, they were always uh, getting dressed to work instead of a normal T-shirt or things like that. It was with a shirt and things like that because it was helping them. I was like, wow, that's really cool. But it doesn't work for me. But I know that it was working for others and maybe it will work for some of you. The work-life balance and the time for yourself. One of the things that I was uh, missing the first months of the pandemic. I have a long commuting to go to London. It's one hour train, it's 20 minutes walk, one hour train, and between 10 and 20 minutes walk. I didn't like the commuting itself, but it was really important for me because I was able to switch between working mode and home mode. Now, well, during the pandemic it changed. Didn't have that time, 
I was able to get calls at 7 uh, and 7 p.m. and so on. But now you, we are back to the office, but maybe you are back one day a week. That's one thing that it works for me and it works for a lot of people. I block the commuting time whether I'm going to the office or not. And also coming back. And the lunch time. The time that is for you and not for working, you keep it. If Monday you're going to the office, then you know what's that's train, walking, and everything. If you are not, you can use that to do your morning exercise, the bike, to read a book, to do nothing at all, but it's your time. And normally, if you tend to block your calendar, people are nicer now, and they don't put meetings, or at least you can actually reject me this because you say, sorry, I'm busy at that time, right? They don't need to know what you're doing. Just put in private meeting. <laughs> And that really worked. That helped me ensuring that I'm not working seven till seven without a stop, because that's important, and ensuring that I can have time for me, that my mind can actually do the switch. For me right now, it's really great, but my daughter, five years old, first year in school, I can bring her to school every day, four days a week, because one day I'm going to London. But I'm lying. even sometimes I do the five days and I'm just going, late to the office, because why not, right? <laughs> it's in terms of priorities, go to the school with my daughter or work in. So for, for me, it's pretty clear, and you should probably do the same. Disconnect from work, the end of the working day. A lot of people share with me that what they do, when they want to finish work or start work, they go out, they open the door, Go walk to the block and come back. Sometimes it's only five minutes, but that's enough for them to let them the brain. I need more than five minutes. Probably my brain is a little bit slow, especially in the mornings. But that, that helps a lot for a lot of people. That also helps to do the same when you want to do regular breaks. Did you find when you were working from home, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, that you were doing three or four hours in a row without any break? Because it was happening to me. I wasn't realizing, and then I was, Oh, I'm really achy, oh, I'm too tired, oh man, four hours. So now I'm always trying to do the same breaks that I was doing in the office. In the office, I only needed to see if someone that I like is going to the coffee machine. I say, oh, time for a break. And then you talk, right? Now I do the same, but it's, I put an alarm actually on, <laughs> on the clock. Or on my, so, oh, coffee time. And I go to the first floor of coffee, and I start now that it's spring, see, I have a garden. Watching the birds for five minutes. If you put food, it, it happens quite often. And that helps all, also to try to focus your eyes on a distant point, because it's not good to be full time without any break just in front of the screen. So I focus on the bird at five or 10 meters, and my eyes are actually resting while I'm enjoying the birds fighting between them. Nah. <coughs> Sometimes I have to run because around, I don't know, 80% of my neighbors, they have cats. And I just realized that even the traps with the ultrasounds, they know now where are the ultrasounds and that the cats are really, so in the morning they're usually hiding and I have to run. Ah, maybe that's my morning exercise. No? <laughs> uh, you can see clearly that's not one of the advice that I do, even though I love salmon. The healthy food. If you don't do exercise and you don't do healthy food, you're going to get some kilo. That, I, I, I have proven that, so you don't have to try. When you needed to go to the office before, for me it was really easy. I wasn't cooking. I was just going out. Uh, one of those ready meal <laughs> and eating. I don't have to prepare food. Uh, oh, you're working from home. You need to prepare food. Oh, but in one hour, I cannot prepare everything. It's, it's, or I end up eating sandwich all the time. And a lot of people that they were actually cooking before, they told me, oh, I keep cooking on Sundays for the whole week. I'm putting it in the freezer. And this just in the morning. I just put the food exactly as I was doing before. That helped me to be relaxed on Sunday before and to have the time to enjoy food. And I found it really nice that I'm not really good planning my weekly food. I'm 
good planning how others can work or how others can improve your <laughs> but for me it's complicated always right <laughs> one of the good things even if you are doing healthy food all the time and that is when I did some years ago some diet even the nutritionists say you cannot be doing all the time the boring food so they allow me at that time once a week to have a nice dessert or even twice a week depending on the moment because it's, it's a little reward that you are making for yourself. So it's the same if you do the batch cooking, but uh, before you were going on Fridays to your teammates to a nice food, you can even prepare that and have a nice food uh, every Friday, right? That's controversial for some people. I don't know why. Make friends at work. So it's one of the things sometimes it's... We can be a little bit weird when we're in front of the uh, computer all the time. And uh, we don't like people to come to us. But for me, I realized that when I find someone that I can talk about anything, or we have affinities, I'm working better. And I'm even more willing to help the rest of the company, only because there's one or two that I, I feel better, right? It's like uh, Cracks was saying yesterday to find a, a, a working wife or husband. Well, it, it sounds a little bit too extreme for me, but it's, it's the same thing, right? And it's now when I go to the office, I don't do it really, really for working. I'm doing it because I want those personal interactions. And that gives me the energy for the rest of the week. So I have the choice to go or not to the office. And I decided because I can see the people, right? It's a lot of small tips that probably you already done doing a lot. If you have a new one, I'm more than happy if you share it with me. So I put some together. For me, work by like balance is the most important for me from my context. Because I don't know whether I have the opportunity to do that on my personal life tomorrow. And the work is going to be always tomorrow and the day after and so on. It's a, you know, if for any reason you are not here tomorrow, in the work, they will find someone to replace you. In your personal life, they won't find someone to replace you. That's the thing about it. Don't stop learning or to improve, micro improvements all the time. That keeps me saying, and sometimes it's good, yes, I cannot learn anything new today, but I'm gonna try tomorrow. That's at least that feeling, right? Customize your workspace or something that makes you yourself that is the work is fun even when I'm working from home. So it might be anything. And it also gives a lot of conversations. When someone sees on the webcam, what's that? Are they, those games or books? And I say, oh, that's graphic novel from Marvel or DC. I'm revealing that I'm a geek to everyone. But at least I'm talking about someone else, something else. Right? Daily exercise. Or exercise. Maybe daily is a little bit too optimistic. <laughs> Walking is also exercise if you don't do it normally. And it's easy to do, at least for me. I can do that one. So try to do it, especially on that time, the commuting time that you have blocked on your calendar, because you are going to do that now, right? <laughs> Healthy food and treating yourself from time to time. Yeah, we all like pizza from time to time, right? But every day is not good. <laughs> Regular breaks, that's key. I like. Before, when I was uh, wearing one of the Fitbits, before I uh, was using it, I like it the, when you can put it that it's going to vibrate if you, if you haven't moved for one hour. That's the most amazing thing that I have used in the past, just to ensure that I'm standing up and going out and coming back. I make friends at work. Or even I'm doing on the train or something. One of the things that I do now, I have a friend that we we try to do every two or three months. And we say, we have salad time. And you say, well, salad time after everything that you're talking about healthy food? <laughs> you are right. For those in London, there is a chain of uh, sushi and chicken katsu curry that we love. And when we were talking before pandemic, let's have a salad. It's a chicken katsu curry because it has chicken, vegetables, and rice. And you can do salads with those three, right? So that's my trick to the health. And it's my friend, so he's always doing that. 
And we are on different companies now, and I had a salad with him last week. And it was amazing. Kosanam. <laughs>